There's two things that go on my not so fun, but absolutely necessary list. And that's the legal side of things and the accounting side of things. So today's guest is going to help us clear up a lot of those questions we have about the legal side of running your online course business. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Course Creators HQ Podcast, helping you navigate the latest techniques for creating and marketing online courses. And now, here is your host, Julie Hood. So Heather Pierce Campbell, really incredible attorney, all about helping online course creators and online entrepreneurs. And she has some amazing resources for you. And so I'm going to put all of those in the show notes at coursecreatorshq.com slash 85. That's coursecreatorshq.com slash 85. She has a business boot camp that you can get by email. She also does a monthly Q&A session with her, but you have to be on her email list. So I will have all these links for you in the show notes and at the uh, link coursecreatorshq.com slash 85, because I'm sure by the time you finish listening to this, you will want to jump in to everything that Heather has for you. So enjoy our interview. I hope you learn as much as I did from Heather Pierce Campbell. This is one of those issues I have been wanting to have her on since the very beginning of my podcast. She has so much good information for you. I think I heard Heather speak actually a couple years ago. So it's been in the works for a while, Heather. So thank you so much for coming today to help everybody out with all the legal side of things that kind of get us headed in the right direction. Oh, thank you, Julie. So great to be here. I'm so, I mean, I love what I do. So you know me, I could talk all day long about it. I think we did first meet at a J Facet event a couple of years ago. I remember when we crossed paths. So that was fun. I'm yes. glad to be back. Your, your presentation was so spot on. I was like, oh my goodness, I have to work with her. <laughs> so, um, so before we get started, get into some of the specifics, I want to start, I like to put the really cool stuff at the beginning. So if people come back to listen they hear this right off the top Mm -hmm. so can you tell us you do this really amazing thing where once a month you have a q a session for folks Mm -hmm. so can you tell us about that and sort of how it works and i'll put the link in the show notes so everyone can can get to it but tell us a little bit about what that is if you don't mind yeah totally i love it it's um i started it actually the when COVID hit i started it like right at the start of march it's called ask me anything live my big goal for that year, and I did it every Monday, every Monday at 11 a.m. I went live and my big goal was to get people online, get their businesses transitioned online and get them protected, right? You had so many people caught by surprise, lots of people who were like, oh, I know I've needed to go bigger online. I know I've needed to do this stuff. And then they really had to do it, right? So, um, so I started that in 2020 and then last year and this year, I've, I've converted it to a monthly Ask Me Anything Live. So that's the second Monday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific. And you have to be on my list to get the link. I don't share it on social media. I don't share it anywhere except for people that are subscribed. So um, and you can you I'll, I'll drop you the link, but it's just legal website warrior dot com forward slash ask me. Perfect. Oh, yeah. thank you. So everyone, when the things come up, definitely you can start there with Heather and then we're going to get into some more of the really common things that come up. So can we start with talking about legal disclaimers, privacy policy? You know, when you first create a website, if you're going to sell your course, can mm-hmm. you kind of point us in the right direction of how to get started on all this? So we get at least headed in the right way. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I, you know, I joke with people that the online world of business is the wild west of business, right? People can throw up a website, they can launch a course, they can sometimes, you know, try to say what they want online and suddenly be in business. And there's so much that happens in the online space that moves quickly, that happens without us knowing it, right? When you're talking about uh, people seeing your content, taking your content, sharing your content, doing stuff with it that you don't have any control over. 
Um, there's just a lot to think about that people generally don't know about until they're in the middle of a mess. And so the, you know, I do like to remind people the online world of business is super exciting. You absolutely need to be there. You need to be showing up and doing awesome things online and building your database and getting your content out there, setting yourself up as an expert, like doing all those things. And I like to slow people down just for a minute. So they know, just like when you get in your car and you go drive on the highway or drive down any road in your town or your city, you're presumed to know the law, just like you're presumed to know the speed limit. And most people don't, especially in the online world of business. They like, how would they know the law? Right. So, um, it's, that's, what's challenging about the legal world is that it's, I call it a black box legal model. It's hard to get inside, which is why I'm so committed to education. And especially for the smaller businesses, the smaller entrepreneurs who don't otherwise generally have access to legal counsel, certainly not in-house legal counsel, helping them make every decision the right way and strategically when it comes to the law. So this is where I say a little of the right education goes a long way. It's oh, like, that's it's so like good. driving with your seatbelt on. Yeah. Yeah. So is there, are there some things that you would say, absolutely make sure you have this before mm-hmm. you Okay. Yeah, totally. The the one thing and all, I'm pretty direct, like when you're talking about what's absolutely required and usually like from the perspective of what's required by law, you're talking about a privacy policy, right? Privacy issues are paramount and it really doesn't matter the size of your business. You have to take privacy seriously uh, because the penalties are real. And if you have, if your business is subject to a data breach or you know, you somehow inadvertently expose personal information of your clients, right? I work with a lot of clients who collect quite a bit of data about their clients. They're in the health coaching space or business coaching space. And you think about the ways that we collect data, even inside of small businesses, questionnaires, and, you know, all of these things that we have people fill out so that we can learn about their businesses before we provide our services or, you know, coaches who have online programs and even enrolling in those programs, sometimes depending how the program is, is delivered. Like there's a lot of hybrid models where they get live coaching and they get access to recorded Mm -hmm. programs, right? Sometimes it's just about the course, but you're still collecting personal information and it might be housed inside of your CRM might be housed inside of the learning education platform itself, right? There's different ways that it gets collected you have to handle your privacy issues the right way. So generally what this means is if you are like most of my clients, your business is interstate, it's probably international. You're collecting information from people around the world and that's how you want it to be, right? Yes. That's how <laughs> that's how experts in the online space want it to be. And if you're doing that, you have to be very aware that there are certain privacy regulations that apply, like the GDPR that everybody heard so much about a few years ago. So having a compliant privacy policy, you just can't be in online business without one. And a lot of people think, well, like, oh, I can just go to one of those, you know, privacy policy generators, right? The question I have is, you know, who is that generator built for? If it's a mass market solution, it's a solution for nobody. There's no such thing as a single client in a mass market. So it, you know, that that's a fit for, and, um, it it is why, I mean, the irony is that I, I really rail against kind of templatized type products. And yet I've created templates in my own business only because I serve such a specific niche. I'm not for everybody. I'm not for generally brick and mortar businesses. I'm not for big businesses. I'm not for most businesses, actually. Who I'm for are the very small business, the the micro entrepreneurs, if you will, right? Experts, thought leaders, um, coaches, consultants, people who are building a business that needs to be a thriving, sustainable business so that they can essentially fulfill their purpose through their work in the world. And so, you know, it's, it's why I'm so committed to supporting people on that path is I want their businesses to thrive. I want them to excel. I want them absolutely to create 
a phenomenal small business that serves themselves and serves them cl- their clients and allows them to do amazing work. So um, yeah, if you're online, step number one is make sure you understand privacy, get a privacy policy in place and make sure it's a fit for your business. That's probably not going to be a template site online. Those can do real harm mm-hmm. if they're not tailored because there's, there's two parts of privacy. There's saying what you do and doing what you say. And a lot of people think, oh, if I just post a document, if I just post this on my site, I'm covered. No, you're absolutely not covered. You have to understand the concept of data flows and, and how data makes its way into your business and who has access to it once it's inside your business, right? We all work with data processors in Fusionsoft, right? You and I have had conversations about email (laughs) issues and other things and, We all work with a variety of what are called data processors. We're the data controller. We we decide what gets collected. Data processors do the work of helping us process that information. So merchant accounts, CRMs, um, you know, all of these online software systems that connect and talk to our websites and help transact sales and do all of these things that run our online businesses, Learning, learning platforms, right? e-learning platforms. Those are another data processor. So, yeah, so there's, there's, there's two parts to it. And it's why I've built the business that I have the, the way that I have is that I believe you have to have core documentation first, and you have to have the education that transforms you as a leader of your business. Cause that is your job to lead your business and to do that safely. And the marketplace really separates those things. If you're getting documentation, you're very often not getting any education around that and what it means for you. That's so true. I'm glad you mentioned that specifics because I don't think I even realized that you had to do both, both pieces, you know, have the privacy policy and make sure you're doing the the second piece of the puzzle. So Mm -hmm. thank you for telling us that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and one small example, you want to see that in action is like somebody posts how many times at the point of opt-in have you gone to a website and it's like, oh, we will never share your information with a third party. Right. Have you seen that? Or your information is hundred percent safe with us. No, no, it's not. Don't say that stuff on your site. Never say that stuff at the point of opt-in because not only you're sharing it with probably like five third parties before it even hits your system. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So oh. these are the really obvious ways that people violate their own privacy policies at the point of opt-in. Oh, that's such a good example. I'm going to have to go check and see. if. I, <laughs> <laughs> but what, well, and how do you feel about putting, um, we won't spam? Is that a safe one or not? <laughs> it's a safe one. Spam is a tricky issue. Cause let's talk about what happens when somebody joins your list is they can still market as spam, right? Just because you're not spamming doesn't eliminate the fact that you know, they might forget they joined your list and still mark something as spam. Um, but it, you know, the, my goal is what is it that you're saying? Why are you saying it? Is it because you want somebody to opt in? Like you're using it as an incentive. The goal really should be clarity. You should be saying, Mm. we care about your information. Please visit our privacy policy for, you know, for, for more info to read the full policy. And then have a hyperlink where people can automatically click over and get access to your full privacy policy. Like the the goal for me, from my perspective, is transparency and constructive notice. You want somebody to have achieved notice, have, have received notice that your privacy policy is in place. And from a legal perspective, constructive notice is really important. If somebody okay. doesn't know your policies are there they're probably not going to go read them, right? So if they receive no notification that you even have policies up, like that's a bit of a problem. And so even in the online space, like WordPress goes through an update, how many times has like your footer menu disappeared or things went a little wonky and you have to go like, I can't tell you the number of times I've double checked client sites and been like, hey, your legal documentation doesn't show up anywhere. Oh no. (laughs) It went away in an update. They have to reinstall it or go make sure that those links show up again. And so it's, you know, 
there are just multiple parts that people need to think about. One is the documentation itself being the right documentation for your business. Two, having practices in place that support uh, compliance with the law, including in regards to that documentation, right? And then the kind of the third aspect is the functional how to achieve proper notice and compliance, right? Because that's the like the part where you actually have to implement or have your website people implement those documents and do it in the right way. And a, a lot of people get that step wrong. Oh, so many places where we could mess up. I'm so yeah. glad you're here to help us figure <laughs> all this out. <laughs> well, and, and the point, I, you know, I can see you being like, oh, deer in the headlights over this one small example. <laughs> um, you know, slow down because just like you had to figure out, like when you were very first building your website, like what is an opt-in? How do you get the email form working? Like think of how overwhelming stuff like that in the beginning felt because you didn't know anything about how it worked. And probably with just a few minutes and a few examples and getting a few things connected, bam, you've got your system working. Like it doesn't take a lot. It just takes like any other area of business, a little willingness to learn and to look there. Yes. And not ignore it. So that's, that's right. why we're doing this today. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I work with a lot of health coaches and health mm -hmm. practitioner kind of mm -hmm. things. And I know there's some special legal things that they need to be considering. So can you point us to what totally. they need? Cause it's completely different. I haven't ever done any <laughs> of the health stuff. So I want to make mm -hmm. sure that i I'm covering or at least know where to point them. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a great question. And um, there's some issues both in regards to the online stuff, but let's, let's backtrack even more because right. There's, there's some areas within the law that are kind of, we'll just call them hot spots for, from the perspective of the FTC, the federal trade commission, which is our online watchdog for lack of a better term. Right. So they kind of watch out for consumers and go after any businesses that they feel like are violating the truth and advertising laws or any of the other regulations that apply to online business. Um, so there's that piece, there's the online co component that we can talk about a little bit, but also for people in the health space, like I want to back up because some of the issues happen even, you know, separate and apart from being online. Mm. The first thing that you want to, you know, understand is if you're a licensed professional, I work with a lot of folks who come from a background of being a licensed professional, whether they're a therapist of some, some you know, some kind, maybe they are in the, in the physical space of therapy, a massage therapist, or they have an acupuncture practice or, you know, whatever, they really could be doing any kind of modality. But when you're talking about being a licensed healthcare person, a licensed professional, you've, you've got to very, very carefully before you go online and, and start sharing information and services online, um, have to understand your primary business first and any licensing rules that apply to you. So for example, right, if you're a health coach and you are building out something online and you're in Ohio, maybe that's fine. But if you reach into Florida, suddenly you're in hot water because Florida law, mm. you cannot be a health coach there and offer certain services, including guidance around nutrition or anything else that, that falls under a licensing requirement. So, you know, step number one in anything that you're doing in the health space is to understand, are you subject to any rules that govern licensed professionals? Whether that means that you are licensed yourself and you have to obey the limits of your licensure, or are you precluded from doing certain things in certain states? Because you have to know about that before you oh. go online and start <laughs> offering services in all 50 states, right? Now, around course creation itself, online education, you're, you're pretty safe. If you stick with like group education, courses, online information, right? You're not offering, for example, custom nutritional coaching to, you know, a consumer in Florida, right? So there is a difference, but you need to understand what those are before you accidentally cross the line because you, you don't want to do that. Um, and many licensed professionals will actually choose to 
set up their online business, basically think of it as an online information and education business, right? It's, it's education, a course. Well, what I, basically my takeaway is that if you are a licensed professional in the health space, you may consider that if you're, if you're moving into the online education world that you, my recommendation always to those clients is actually set up two separate businesses, maintain your professional license and practice over here separately set up an LLC or whatever is appropriate for you to house your online information and education business separate and apart from what you're doing with your license. That way you, you don't, you, you, it's less of a risk of crossing over that line of let's pretend you're a therapist, essentially offering therapy across state lines and just calling it coaching. You don't want to do that. Right. In the context of courses and coursework, right? Because there's the issue of licensure. There's plenty of people in the health space. Like I, I had a client this morning that I spoke with. She teaches like EFT tapping, right? Emotion. I can't remember what that stands for. The tapping. And then she also does um, hypnotherapy and some other things. She's not licensed. Like she's certified. She knows how to do that stuff, but there's not a state license to go along with it, Right. When you're on that side of the line, you need to have specific disclosures on your website, on your social media, when you're educating people that, you know, this is not therapy, you're not diagnosing people, you're not, you know, ABC, XYZ, you cross all of your T's and dot your I's so that you really are taking care of the consumers or the clients, you know, that, that are interacting with you in that way, because you're providing them information that helps them form a correct opinion about what's happening in that exchange. And that's really key because generally if you're at risk of some kind of, um, you know, professional liability or malpractice, or you get accused of practicing medicine and you're really not because somebody had a false idea about what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So we have to really work hard at the front end of controlling that perception and, you know, providing accurate information about what we're there to do and not do. So those disclosures are really important. Okay. So you can help yeah. us, like we can, we can contact you and, and find out totally. more about what those should be, right? Okay. Yeah. And it's not a, it's not a high hurdle. You know what I mean? It's just about having clear language and that making sure that it, it shows up in the right places so that when people, you know, are engaging with you online or live or whatever the, the format is that they understand what you're doing. Okay. Yep. So, and I'm going to throw out a very specific situation because mm-hmm. I have a new student who is wanting to do a course and she's helping with meal planning. So it is that mm-hmm. nutrition kind of thing. And so is, does she need to do something special about Florida or does she just need the right disclosures or, or, um, what would you suggest there? So it's a course as in a pre-recorded digital consumable type of course, or is it live? It might be both. I I haven't talked to her, which she's going to do. So if it's live and yeah, if it's live, you've got more risk than if it's like a pre-recorded digital training, right? Because you can offer that up as education and information. The risk, even in a group context is that somebody says, well, let's say I have eczema. How should I be planning my meal plan or whatever? Right. And then she responds to that question. Like she is in a position to treat that or diagnose it or say, here's what works. You have to be really careful in the context of group coaching that you're still not crossing over those boundaries, right. Of saying, yes, this is a fit for you, given your custom circumstances, you know, your unique circumstances. So people do need to be very careful around their language and especially in live programs, right. A lot of the language that they could be using is, Well, in my experience, you know, working with women of this age group, you know, it's not that this is for you, that this is absolutely the right answer for you. Right. And always, if you've got questions about a medical condition, about a symptom, about anything else, you need to be seeking professional support, right? We need to have those disclosures very clear. So, yeah, so people do need to be very careful and walk that line carefully because it's easy to step over. And when people are like, oh, she just gave me custom advice for me, that could be, you know, one-on-one nutritional coaching just delivered in the context of a group program. 
Gotcha. Okay. I'm so glad I had you on yet another thing that I didn't know about. <laughs> so, uh, really good to know. Um, and let's move on real quick to mm-hmm. photos too, mm-hmm. because this one I did have an experience with, with a client, the client was working with a designer and the designer found them photos to use on their website and put the whole website together And it was probably a good two or three years later, suddenly they were getting legal notices that they needed to pay, I want to say at least $1,000, maybe $1,900 because the photos were infringing on legal Mm -hmm. rights. And Mm -hmm. so I always talk about this to make sure people are Mm -hmm. taking care of it, but point us towards the, in the right direction regarding photos. Yeah. Well, and whether it's photos, whether it's language like copy, it really doesn't matter what it is. The rule across the board, I tell my clients and anybody who will listen to me, if you have not created it yourself, have not hired and paid somebody to create it or do not have licensing language in place. Like let's say it's, you know, it's, it's free to use. You still need to have licensing language in place that allows for that use don't use it. People think like, oh, well, I could, you know, I found it on the internet or it seems, seems like other people were using this or whatever the excuse is, just don't do it. It's, it's terribly problematic. And so, you know, I often, I often joke that just a big dose of personal ethics would fix a lot of these issues. (laughs) That's a good point. (laughs) Work with ethical people, be an ethical person, make decisions around content, understanding that if you did not create it or pay somebody to create it, it's not yours and you shouldn't use it or have a, like I said, license in place to use it for free. And so always when you are visiting sites, looking for content, pay for the content, get that little printable license, save it, keep it, have records showing that you crossed your T's and dotted your I's because copyright infringement is no small thing. And even if somebody doesn't take you all the way to court, it's still problematic, especially if you're taking something and using it for a commercial purpose, right? It's, right. That's pretty unexcusable to use somebody else's content for making money in your own business. And I've, had people in the past that say, Oh, I just went out to Google and I found this picture and I'm going to put this into my presentation for my course. And I'm like, no, 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 no. (laughs) Right. And the the add-ons to that are be careful who you hire and work with. If you are hiring a marketing team, if you're hiring a design team or website developer, make sure that one, you've got contracts in place to cover that arrangement, that engagement, and that there is language that says, If they bring content to the table to use in your project, they represent that they have ownership rights to that content, Mm -hmm. right? And that ultimately you will be the owner of that once they deliver the project. Um, Or two, just hire somebody who can create that content for you. Make sure that if you've got an independent contractor agreement in place, you have language that's appropriate to capture that content, right? Um, And in different states, this is going to look a little different, um, but you want to generally be the owner of that content if you're paying somebody to create it for you. Um, And so, you know, make sure that you have those upfront contracts in place that govern that work and govern that relationship. And then just understand you're ultimately responsible for what other people do on behalf of your business. Doesn't matter that a design, like if, if you had a valid contract in place, you might have some rights to go after other people, right. For reimbursement or something. If you don't have a contract, you know, you're up a Creek, but uh, you, even from like an affiliate marketing standpoint, if you've got affiliates running around in the world, sharing about your business, sharing content, I had a situation where a guy called me a friend of mine who had an affiliate program in place, somebody in China who was on his affiliate list, snagged photos from a photographer and was sending them out with her emails to her list in, in, uh, you know, accompanying his stuff. So he got sued for that because his affiliate did it. That's money in his pocket through an affiliate program. So just understand people do a lot of crazy things in the online space because they stay ignorant of the rules and just don't be that person. Do, Do, you know, do what it takes to be a leader of your business, to learn the rules and to make sure that anybody that you're working with also understands the rules. 
Oh, that's a good point too. Yeah. Training your team. So, yeah. so I, I'm sure that uh, everyone who's listened to this point is probably also having the deer in the headlights, like, oh my goodness, what have I done <laughs> or what have I not done? So <laughs> what are some next steps? Like if they want to get more from you or learn mm-hmm. what they don't know that they need right. to know, uh, what, what, if, how can you help? <laughs> Totally. Well, and yet deer in the headlights, just understand business is a major opportunity and it comes with obligations, right? So it's, it really is about balancing those things. It's like, we should have obligations when we have these huge opportunities. And so I don't see it as like any additional burden. It just is what it is. Just like you have to learn sales or marketing for your business or anything else. This is one area that you just have to get some basic information around. Um, I mean, a couple resources that I've created because I understand how hard it is to be a small, I mean, I've worked with folks in this space for years and years. I understand how hard it is to get the information that you need, which is why I've created so many resources trying to educate people. Um, so there's a couple things that I could point out that are easy, consumable, short, like easy to attend and get a lot of value. We've already covered one of them, which is the ask me anything live, right? Yes. Yes. Have a question, show up. You're going to also be, you know, in a group and that will probably cover 20 other questions on the same call. Like, and I I'll share with you, Julie, you can put it into your show notes. Um, my ask me anything, um, stream of videos on my YouTube channel, because that has past content there. They could go peek around at the kinds of things that we cover in a single call. Um, and then the other thing is my legal basics boot camp, right? It's, it's a little mini training, like five days of like five minute videos, uh, that walk people through the five buckets for legal protection in your business. Perfect. So yeah, that's a great resource. It's a way to kind of start to look at like, okay, what is the map? Where am I on the map? What does my particular business need? Right. And like I said, a little of the right information goes a long way towards protecting your business. Awesome. Oh my goodness. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Is there any sort of last uh, things that you would like to share to the listeners or something that, that you want to make sure they know? Totally. It's, it's all very doable. Like there's a system (laughs) in place for this. (laughs) It is very doable. Don't let it overwhelm you just because it's not an area that you, you know, you don't know about yet. It's very doable. And, um, and the way that you'll feel on the other side of looking at the legal stuff that applies to your business and handling it, It's like, well, one of our mutual friends, I did some legal services for him and, you know, and it was just one piece of the overall puzzle. But I asked him when we got done, like, okay, how, you know, we tackled this thing. How does it feel? Like, tell tell me where you're at. And he's like, it feels like I took off a 50 pound backpack that I didn't know I was carrying around. Wow. That's true. It's that, really that unknown yes. is really kind of heavy. <laughs> it is. And for people that have assets in their lives that have families that are wondering like, what am I doing or potentially doing in my business to put some of my other assets at risk, right? We cover business formation. I cover business contracts. I cover intellectual property, like little bit of the right education will help you understand where those things fit for you and how to approach those. Because my goal is that you can put a hundred percent of yourself into your business and go to sleep at night and have peace, like know that you've taken care of everything and that you, you can rock it in your business and you've got the structure to support that. So good. So good. And I know we just barely scraped the surface of, Mm. of some of the things that are relevant. So I hope everyone will jump into your, ask me anything, get the copy of the five day boot camp because it will make you feel so much better about all of these things. And I love how you told us, you know, it's just like learning the other pieces of it. It, It's not like it's so complex or impossible to understand. No, it's not. It's, you know, what we pay attention to, we consume, right? So mm-hmm. it's, it's just about the fact that most people don't want to pay attention to it. And there's lots of valid reasons why not. But ultimately, if you intend to be a successful small business and an online business, 
you've got to have some legal chops. There's just no other way to say it because otherwise you're running around making pretty critical decisions for your business without the benefit of a little bit of knowledge about that decision. And it, it really doesn't take a lot. You don't have to go to law school. That's, you know, it's what people like me are for, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, don't think like, Oh, it's beyond me to understand this. It's not at all. Yes. Thanks to you for pulling this all together for us. So I so appreciate you, Heather, for being here and sharing all this brilliance with us. So thank you. Thank you. And we will be jumping into your calls on your ask me anything. Mm -hmm. And I will put the links in all the show notes. So everyone who's listening, make sure you follow up because um, this is so essential to keeping your business safe and in, in a good place. So oh, thank, thank you, Heather. Thank you, Julie. So great to be here with you today. The The final point that I'll make is like, even with my legal basics boot camp, which is a really short consumable thing, I have people that go through it multiple times. I could see the, that. <laughs> right. The reason being is like, you're going to hear it the first time and go, oh yeah, I'm ready for that piece. And then you're going to hear it the second time. And then you go, oh, I already handled that piece. Now I'll turn and handle this piece. Right. So just understand it's a journey, just like your marketing is not set it and forget it. You have to keep looking in the marketing bucket. You have to keep looking at your sales numbers, right? All of that. It's the same with law. It's the same with legal supports, right? Just think of it as part of the journey. So good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. So happy to see you. Take care. So I hope you enjoyed this interview with Heather as much as I did. I felt like she shared so much good information with us. So please be sure to check out the show notes and follow up. Check out all of the free information that Heather can provide. And if you need that link, it's coursecreatorshq.com slash 85. We'll have all the links for you. So thanks for being here today. And I hope you learned something and are ready to keep your online course business safe and protected. Have a fantastic week and we will catch you on the next episode. Take care.